Furious Driving, proud to be supported by Diamond Bright, protecting, cleaning and caring for the Furious fleet and for yours with 10% off using code FD10. Bidding Classics, the online classic car marketplace with more cars added every week. And Lancaster Insurance cover the Furious fleet. They are one of the biggest specialist insurers in the UK covering all areas of vintage to modern classic cars and motorbikes. Follow the links in the description below. Welcome to Furious Driving. And today I am driving for probably the last time, if all goes to plan, my Fiat Idea, my 2007 Punto Mark II based mini MPV, which is, I've only owned for a couple of weeks but has been an enormously enjoyable addition to the fleet, albeit temporarily. But because it was part of the flip program, it was always destined to be sold fairly rapidly. Um, currently, I'm just on the way via the post office, picking up the uh, PO box stuff. I've got hands-free in this car, I'm gonna have to pull over and answer that. So yes, where was I? I was so rudely interrupted by a, <laughs> basically a junk phone call. But yes, driving the idea for the last time. If you were at the NEC over the weekend or saw any of the NEC coverage from other YouTubers and myself over the weekend, then you'll know this was up in the Practical Classics Lancaster Insurance restoration show on the Fiat Club stand, where the response of this, to this thing was overwhelmingly positive. I mean, to the such an extent, I'm actually having second thoughts about parting with it. People were so, also just so overwhelmingly happy to see it and confused by it. And the number of times I was just stood nearby and just see someone walk past, look a bit confused by it, walk around the back to look at the boot and then go, oh, okay, and kind of shrug and, and wander on, having just found out what an idea was and that an idea even exists. So. That was actually quite entertaining. And it was incredibly uh, frugal over the weekend as well. Before I left, it was on, on amber on the fuel gauge. I filled it to the brim with about 50 pounds worth of petrol and um, got there on about a third of a tank of fuel. Got back last night and it still had a quarter of a tank in it. So that's 300 or so miles on three quarters of a tank of fuel. This has actually just crept down a little bit low now. I think it's a bit slow to move on the bottom bottom quarter. But it's such a nice little car. It's a typical Italian small car that you just gotta rag the engine and the more you, you rag it, the better it gets. Anyway, right now I'm on the way to go and trade this car for another straight swap. It's gonna be, I've taken this car for the car plus money, but the Beetle, we had the rust problem, hopefully gonna be able to catch up and see that actually uh, in, in the metal, in the rust, in a week or two's time, because that's gonna get fixed very shortly. Be able to see how bad it really was. And um, yeah, so we wound up with a 1,500 pound for 1,500 pound. Now the car I'm going to see right now is a car I actually saw, uh, or was told about, a few weeks ago, in fact. And uh, it's quite an interesting story. It's another 1,500 pounder, but I'm hoping this is one that I can polish a bit of money into rather than doing a straight 1,500 pounds for 1,500 pounds. The problem with this Fiat was that there's nothing I can do to this Fiat right now that will cost less than it will add to the value of. So it's just cosmetics and cosmetics are expensive. So I can sort out the lacquer peel at the front. I can sort out that little scratch down the side, that small gouge on these driver's side doors. Doing so would probably cost a couple hundred pounds, but in reality, put zero on the car's value. So in terms of effort and time expended, it's just not worth it. And it doesn't affect the car. So yes, bear with, I'm just driving up to go and see this other car, which I was gonna turn down. In fact, I did turn down initially because I had nowhere to put it and didn't have an opportunity to, to buy it. But now this one, this car has given me the chance to buy it. So I'm quite excited. I think you'll find it's very on brand. Well, here I am. I'm just driving away from the garage in my new car and with a certain inevitability, it's a Rover 75, which was, let's face it, going to happen sooner or later. But the one I've got is absolutely the one to have. It's only got 59,000 miles on the clock. It was owned by an old gentleman who is in his late 80s, I believe, and has just given up driving, having MOT'd it for the last time a few weeks ago. And it is pretty much immaculate. There's not a lot wrong with this car. Um, so in terms of the flip program, it's good and bad. I'll come all to this in a second in more detail, but the car itself is fabulous. 
I was told it was a one owner car from new, but I've still looked at the V5, and it turns out it's actually far more interesting than that, because it turns out it's a two owner car, but the first owner was Rover Fleet Management. So this was either a demonstrator or a management car at Rover, or possibly even a press car. I've only just realized this is the case, so I'm gonna go Google this in a second. Um, it's obviously not the same day as when I dropped the Fiat off. Uh, there was a slight issue with the paperwork. I had to go home and come back later. So um, yeah, been a slight delay in the swap over, but I'm not upset because the car is absolutely fabulous. There are some similarities with the flip cars because yet again, it's a blue one. It's the fourth car in the flip program and it's the fourth blue car. So that's a weird coincidence that's happened all the way along. It's also another straight swap. Uh, the Fiat were calling 1,500 pounds and this car was being sold for 1,500 pounds as well. So we've gone in at flat money. But I think there is a lot of meat on this particular bone because the story goes, this car was brought in by its last owner, um, had it MOT'd a few weeks ago, and I know it's a good MOT because it was the same man who bounced the Beetle down the road. Um, so I know it's had a thorough check over and there's nothing potentially unsafe or rusty on this car to, to talk about, so that's good. Um, shortly afterwards, the owner came back, said he had, had a serious think about it, we decided to give up driving and would they try and, try and sell it for him, basically. So it's been sat on their forecourt for about six weeks or so, I think. They did actually mention it to me in passing. Not long after it, I came in and uh, I said at the time, yeah, it looks lovely and I sorely want it. But um, I didn't have the space, the money, all the usual stuff. It's always the wrong time and it was the wrong time. So I said, I'll, I'll think about it, I'll bear in mind. But wasn't in a position to buy it. Anyway, along comes the flip program and I've got a £1,500 Fiat, which I need to get rid of. So I went up and said, look, I know it's a crazy idea, but would you be interested in doing a straight swap for car for car? And he gave it some thought, and it turns out his daughter's looking for a car. And the idea very much fits the bill for her, whereas this very much fits the bill for me. So we've done a swap. Thing is though, this car has been very well cared for. I'll take you on a proper walk around in just a moment. But trust me, this car is amazing. But at the same time as being amazing, it's also got a thing of long-term ownership, an older owner, and so it needs a bit of tidying and a bit of care. Although it aced the MOT, there are gonna be little niggles that need sorting out. So I think this is my business head on. And I'm gonna have to keep my business head on very hard indeed with this particular car and not wind up keeping it. I think with it polished and cleaned up, I think I'm gonna be looking at about a 3,000 pound car just here. Not including the cost of any work I do, double my money on this particular one. So let's go find a place to have a proper look around this rather wonderful Wedgwood Blue Rover 75 1.8 Turbo, which I am deeply, deeply enamored with. Okay, let's take a look around my latest ill-advised acquisition, which to be honest is in really very, very nice condition indeed. So what we're looking at here is a 2003 on a 52 plate Rover 75, but not just any 75. This is a 1.8 turbo, which is the really, really desirable one because it gives you really the same performance as the V6, but half the fuel economy. And, uh, uh, probably better weight distribution as well because the K series four cylinder is a lot lighter than the V6. But as I think I said in the drive over here, this is a one owner car. Old chap had it from 2003 and he's now in his late 80s. I'm now the second owner of this beautiful beast. Now you'd expect someone who's coming to the end of their driving career to do two things. First of all, absolutely dote on the car and do zero mileage. And that is correct, 59,000 miles on the clock. And it looks like it's been really well cared for. I'll show you the sheaf of receipts in a minute. But you also expect someone at that age to maybe become a little bit uh, not so good at getting around tight corners and things into the garage and that kind of stuff. But we haven't got any of the usual scuffs we expect on the bumpers. We haven't got any dings in the doors and we have got all lovely, lovely alloy wheels with no scuffs at all. Also, got Dunlops all the way around. Another sign the car has been well cared for. Four matching tires and they've all got it's a half used tread, about four or five millimeters all the way around. So this thing is in absolutely banging condition. 
I mean, it is 100% the stereotype, the old man car. He would have been about 60 when he bought it and he's driven it till he's given up driving. There really isn't a stronger stereotype of motoring than a Rover 75 in that situation and in Wedgwood Blue. So <laughs> we are ticking all the boxes here, but I absolutely love this thing. The styling is just absolutely classic. It's taken all the old Rover styling cues and put them together in something really nicely balanced and proportioned. And you've got these lovely sort of shapes up the doors. You've got these pull out, it's locked. Um, you've got these big pull out door handles, which are sort of solid cast metal, like on an Alpha 156 actually. Similar kind of time period as well. I wonder if that's a bit of a coincidence or not. So it has the classic P5, elements of P4, elements of P6 even with the twin headlights all in here. All these cars, these great, great cars, all wrapped up in what was an ultra modern but slightly retro-y car at the time. So I think we've done pretty well. I'm assuming it's not a gunshot. Right, let's have a look at the interior as well because that's obviously where the person would have spent a lot of the time. So we have got, it's a club model, so it's not really, really high spec, but it is still pretty decent to be fair, but it's lovely fabric on the doors which is coming away slightly got the chrome door handles got four electric windows electric mirrors we've got livable headlights down here little cubby got a lovely wood we have got fabric seats although we have got height adjustment on them as well central locking down in the center we've got a five speed manual gearbox lots more timber that incredible that incredible interior light which is a selling point of the car in my view but the thing is, the condition of the seats is just astonishingly good. What is slightly curious is the wear on the steering wheel, which really is quite badly worn. I wonder if he had a lot of rings or something on, and that's what did in for that. Coming into the back of the car. Coming into the back of the car, and the feel of this thing is just like a new car in many respects. We've got cup holders, got the ashtray. It barely looks like it's been sat in back here. It is amazing. I will go through, when it's not raining, in the next video on this car, an everything wrong with kind of deal, because I'm sure there is stuff to find to fix. A lot of it's gonna be cosmetics, but for the most part, it is in astonishingly good condition. Let's have a look at that engine. So underneath this deliciously fluted sculpted bonnet and actually slightly green bonnet, oh, I think we might have just found one of the jobs we need to add to the list of things to do. We have got, anyway, underneath this bonnet, we have got this fabulous, it's an old friend, basically, the 1.8K series twin cam. I don't think it's a VVC in this one um, because with the turbo, it makes 150 odd horsepower, 250 Newton meters of torque from memory. I might be wrong on that, I can't remember. I need to go and check the brochure <laughs> to get all the correct specs on this thing. But this thing has got a sheaf of paperwork like that fat on the back seat. I'll head home in a minute and I'll take you all through all of that stuff at home in the driveway. But yeah, the car has been really, really well cared for. It seems like there's never, wanted for anything so i'm going to find out when it was last serviced I need to find out when the cam belt was last done because obviously if it needs that doing we will do it but anyway the difference between any of the 1.8 or k series is, is that i own is this wonking great turbo slung down in the front which gives it well it means that the 148 horsepower you talk about doesn't tell the full story it flies this thing is a real wolf in sheep's clothing because it feels so rapid on the road it will break traction very easily indeed um, which is hilarious um, yeah it's fantastic it looks like it's been not crashed which is positive uh, it does need a bit of a cleanup because it has been sat for a, about a month or six weeks or so at the garage who took it in and I'm not sure how much it was driven in the year previous to that I'm suspecting not much to be perfectly honest um, does look in great condition though quick glance around the interior one more time look at the spec we looked at the condition of the wheel and stuff but climbing aboard I love this timber I know it's fake timber but it does look oh so good got the airbag light as a an insert rather than the other style which tells us I think it's pre-project drive I can't remember oh, we've got a crack in the wood just there I didn't notice that before uh, we have though got those fabulous sepia glowing dials I can see on the back of the GoPro it's kind of flickering that's not flickering in real life that's just the refresh rate of the camera and we've got this beautiful vintage dialed analog clock up here as well and we've got this choice of air like on a classic rover you can choose heated rare heated rare heated air or 
cool fresh air, which is a classic, classic Rover thing. So, so cool. Under that, we've got a little wooden prow. It looks like it pulls down like a roller shutter or something, but it's not. It's just a little, little ledge. Then we've got the radio. Now, this is fascinating because this car has got a radio cassette. Just there, we've got the choice of tape or CD, but there's no CD player here in the dashboard. There is a six disc changer hidden away in the boot, um, which is a slightly odd spec choice because surely it's cheaper to have a single disc player in the front. I don't know. But below that also, excitingly cool, we've got dual zone climate in this car, which is another really, really high spec option. But curiously, well not curious really I guess, because we've got the choice of centigrade or Fahrenheit on the display, because Rover were frantically trying to court a younger buyer who weren't about to shuffle off this mortal coil in the next five years and might buy a second Rover after the current one that they're going to buy at the moment. So trying to get the centigrade crowd there, but also Fahrenheit because they were painfully aware that many of their buyers were buying their last car and so Fahrenheit was going to be their bag. Underneath that we've got a wooden strip, we've got 12 volt socket underneath there. We've got a blanking panel, which weirdly doesn't do anything. I think you can buy a aftermarket cup holder that goes behind there because on this side, we have got an actual cup holder, which is kind of handy. And beneath that, we all love the action on these things. Boing, violently pops out the ashtray, which is again, all kind of wooden covered and lovely. Yeah, so it's an, I'm going to have to go and download or buy a Rover 75 brochure from this year because I'm not quite sure what the club spec actually was because dual zone climate seems very high spec but cassette only seems very low spec. No sunroof but we have got the aircon, four electric windows, electric mirrors, front and rear fogs. Basically a really really solid car with loads of toys. Oh there's my uh, history file which we'll run through that in a second. Okay let's get this car home and go to the history file. So putting a couple more miles on the Rover and this thing really is a blast to drive. I think not to 60 time on this car is something like nine and a half seconds. But it feels a lot quicker than that. Top speed's 131. But it's got a lovely feel. I've driven a few Rover 75s and there's a real solid feel to these cars. And the size of the gear shift gives it a real sort of handful that's a proper chunky thing to stir around and swap cogs with. All the controls have got a nice weight to them. There are a couple of things which need to be looked at. I'll talk about in the uh, Everything Wrong With video. Um, I actually drove and reviewed a 1.8 turbo a little while ago. It was that red one, which was the car that was like the last ever registered Rover 75 because it sat in a used car lot for, I don't know, about five years after Rover went pop. So it was a car that shouldn't exist. So I've experienced a 1.8 turbo as well before. And I know it's a great thing to drive. I know the V6 has got that magnificent growl, that real sort of amazing noise and that grunt that only a V motor has. Thing is though, those cars struggle to get 20 miles to the gallon. Whereas this should get something like 35, which makes it a far more usable car. And against all odds, incredibly, this car is ULES friendly. I genuinely didn't think that was going to be a factor. And that's actually a selling point that I gave when I was offering the, uh, the Fiat as a swap. Um, but it turns out they both are. So I can take this car into London or even to the outskirts. Or I can take it to North Kent, which is frantically annoying. This is a shop, it is, yes. I forgot to buy milk. So one thing with this car, it's very hard to see the edges in the corners to work out if you're straight in the place or not. And there's no rear parking sensors that I'm aware of. So you have to be very careful not to knock it into anything. Right, so we are back at base, got a cup of tea. We've got a lot of paperwork with the car. This is, when I say a sheaf of paperwork, I really do mean it. So start off with the basic obvious stuff. We have got all the owner's manuals, which is always a nice thing to find. And also we've found there's a few notes actually tucked into this car saying extra things that have gone on top. So we've got full service in December 2016, minor service January 2018, um, service in March 2019. That was at 53,000 miles. It's done 6,000 miles in the last four years, which is not very many. 
So we'll find if any receipts go with that to say whether the major service, the full one in 2016, covered a uh, timing belt at 49,000 miles. If that was the last time it was done properly, it will need a new timing belt, I, I guess, because that's poor. 10,000 miles ago, but eight years nearly, so, or five, seven years, it's gonna be coming up on that. This was an approved used Rover, which I'll show you in a second. We've got the approved used folder with all the details of the service manager and the parts manager and the sales manager at Beadle's, the MG Rover garage, where it came from. This is all stamped in September 2003 by Beadle's of Gillingham in Kent, which is fairly local to where we are right now. Now, this is where things get interesting because I've got the original V5 for the car, and I guess the owner must have moved house at some point. But the important bit of information just here, it says new at first registration, obviously, but one previous owner acquired the vehicle on the 16th of January 2003, and that previous owner is MG Rover Group, Company Fleet Administration, Unit 3 Pro Lodges Park, West Avenue, Coventry, CV6 4QB. So this car belonged to MG Rover, and it does say 75 Club SET. Registered new, 16th of January 2003, change of keeper, 11th of October 2003. It would have been at least a month between being defleeted and being actually sold, possibly even longer. So we can look at maybe eight or nine months on Rover's own private fleet of cars. So I wonder who it belonged to. That's really interesting. So was it a management car? Was it a press fleet car? I'd love it if it was a press fleet car. Well, because I wouldn't love it because then I wouldn't be able to sell it because this is the conundrum I'm now going to be facing. Because with this flipping up um, program series that I'm doing, every car I buy in has to be sold on. So one of my golden rules is it has to be some profit to break even on the thing. I can't lose money on any of the cars, which is unusual for me. And secondly, I've got to sell it. So ideally it's gonna be a car that I wouldn't ordinarily choose, a car that I don't necessarily want because I want it to be easy to sell. And a one owner X Rover low mileage 75, that's gonna be quite difficult to part with which is actually the other reason I didn't want to buy this car in the first place. I knew a one owner of 75 was going to be a real difficult thing to get rid of. Anyway, this is the uh, paperwork from when the chap bought the car. And what is interesting is this car cost, uh, where did I say it? 13,937 pounds, 83p in 2003. So 14 grand second hand 20 years ago. That was quite a sizable chunk of money. And then we have got lots and lots of history. Um, let's have a quick look what we've got in here. Water. God, there's so much paper. God, I think this first, first of all, this I think is every MOT certificate the car has ever had. Um, yeah, that, that's quite a lot. Uh, most recently it has got brake pipe corroded, covered in grease or other materials on all four corners. So I'll have to investigate that, but I did talk to the garage and they said that they wouldn't have passed it if they thought it was in any way unsafe. It might just be literally dirty. And that was an advisory this year. So it's got an MOT till January 24. Um, same advisory a couple of years ago. Not the year before that. So I'm wondering if it's been just dirty and not dirty or different testers are just stricter perhaps. But looking back, it looks like it's a really well-maintained car. Uh, the only advisory prior to that is back in 2017, tire, tires were getting low, basically two of the tires and the exhaust box fragile. That's a new one, rear exhaust box, fragile. Never seen that advisory before. Now, then we've got just so many more receipts for basic maintenance. Get, ah, cam belt and water pump fitted in 2014. Okay, hasn't written down what the mileage is, but I'm guessing it was low 40s. That's interesting. And the two new belts. Had a fuel pressure regulator fixed by Beadles themselves. When was this? Back in 2006, that was sorted out. Offside drop link in 2020, so that's, that's good. Water screen washer pump, they, those always seem to fail. Exhaust back box was replaced, um, I guess because it was fragile. New battery, when was the battery changed? That was in 2019, so that's probably still okay. It's had a little repair, at Aylesford Body Repair, which is actually the same place that painted the front of my uh, Mini Cooper and also the roof of my Rover Tomcat. So I know they do good work, so that's probably why I couldn't find any problems with it. This was £545 in 2018, but it doesn't say anywhere what it was actually for. I might have to go and pay them a visit and see if they will tell me what they did to it. And a brake light switch for 130 quid, including fitting. 
This is interesting, a manifold gasket in 2019 with the rest of its service. Um, I wonder what that was for. Only 20 quid though. Oh, this is good news. People kept saying to me when I was talking about this car previously, has it had a head gasket? And guess what it has? Oh, it's had a cylinder head as well, blimey. That's a surprise. I guess I had a really bad um, head gasket failure in that case then. £895 for a cylinder head, £76 for a head gasket, £33 for a head bolt set, which means it was done properly. Um, yeah, oil and antifreeze afterwards. £1,684 that cost. Wow, that, when was this? Looks like a recent receipt. 2018, May 2018. Wow, new head, new head gasket. So that's all been done, which means we are basically safe on that particular front. I might give them a call and find out what kind of gasket they used. This is fascinating. Oh, it had a new front coil spring, but coil springs break all the time these days. It's really common. My brother's got a Mercedes the same age as mine, an SUV thing. And um, that's had a broken coil spring. Oh, front roll bar links. Wow, well, this is interesting. It, in 2016, it had a head bolt set only, so I wonder if it had been having little problems and they tried to fix it cheaply before the actual main failure, which then, of course, failed calamitously. Well, so that is very interesting. You can see how well cared for and how loved this car has been. The previous owner has clearly just lavished so much attention to it. He, he, loved, he clearly loved the car and it's in fantastic condition for it. So thank you, thank you to Mr. Previous Owner. You've done a great job looking after it and got £1,700 doing the head gas, or the head. Wow, that must have really just gone badly. So that does mean in terms of what I've got to do to it, the head gasket isn't an issue because I was sort of considering maybe doing the head gasket as a preemptive pre for the next owner. Looks like the timing belt's only done a few thousand miles, but it is probably six or seven years old. So I'll read up on how long those last. I might need to do a timing belt. As I say, the next video will be when I've actually gone through the car properly and know really what I'm looking at. But as it stands, I am so happy with this. This might be a difficult one to part with. The, the lure of the cash is strong, but the lure of a one owner plus MG Rover themselves, 75. I need to go and do some research to find out if this is actually a press car or a management car. That's just so much more cachet and kudos added to the vehicle. I am really, really quite, quite excited by this car. Oh man alive. Well, let me know what you think. Um, have I made the right decision switching the Fiat for the Rover? They're both early noughties. They're both blue. They're both kind of cars that I do like for different reasons. Um, but yeah, this is a really nice car. My Rover 75 Club 1.8T. I'm happy. I'm very happy. Unfortunately, I'm going to be unhappy when I come to sell it, which is a shame. But in the meantime, though, I am going to enjoy driving it for a little while. And I'm going to get it as nice as possible for the next person. Right, so I'm going to go sign off and edit this video so you can go and watch it. And I'll see you again very soon. And I don't know what I'm going to be doing. Possibly more work on the Mini because I went to go and take it for the MOT this morning. The airbag light came back on again and it wouldn't code out this time. So every time previously I've taken the car for an MOT, I've been able to code it out before the test and it's lasted half a day, a couple of hours, at least long enough to get off the ramp again and dry, start driving home. This time though, wasn't even off long enough to get to the MOT testing station. So I'm not gonna risk getting a fail on it. Okay, so I'll leave you again now. And if you've not hit like and subscribe already, then please do hit that subscribe button, that bell notification, so you can follow these calamitous adventures Maybe sometimes I will do well out of a car, but my nine times out of 10, I'm going to come out smelling not of roses. Am I fragrant this time? Well, we'll find out very shortly indeed. Right, thank you for watching. I'll see you again soon. Goodbye. Oh, do you like the mug? This is from Pop Bang Color, by the way. This is the Rove 2000 and the Hippo. Cheers.